there. Hi. <laughs> Good evening. It doesn't feel like evening. It feels like it should be like noon or something like, <laughs> it's like that. We but... should have at least five more hours of work. Right. Time. <laughs> Welcome to Ranch Talk. I'm Mike. I'm Aaron. And uh, we're part of our Wyoming life. We're and part of our part of, part of it. Well, actually, we are part of it. Everybody else, there's 27, <laughs> what do we go? 27,000, 28,000 subscribers, 27. something like that now. And uh, I kind of feel like everybody is a part of it. So I'm going to say that we're a part of it as well. Okay. Does that make sense? It makes absolute sense. It makes yes. absolute <laughs> sense. So uh, thanks for coming and hanging out with us this evening. It has been... It hasn't really been a crazy day, but I can tell you that it's six o'clock tonight. So roughly an hour and one minute ago, um, Aaron and I said, oh, crap, we have to do a live stream. <laughs> oh, crap, it's six o'clock. Yeah. We better go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We have been, uh, we worked on the tunnel for half the day, and then I got roped into um, Aaron's mom bought a swing set for the kids to put in her yard when they're up there hanging out. So I kind of got roped into doing that. The swing set's really, it's not really a complicated swing set, but it's one of those uh, like metal type swing sets that we used to have as a kid and they would thump and bump and they tried <laughs> to flip you over. And I take it all out of the box, dump it out in the yard and no instructions whatsoever. You Which a is picture. a horror. I did have a picture of it, but you know, when the, you get into, you know, there's spacers and there's all, you know, little tiny things that I'm like, I, I know how the, the general thing goes together, but when you get into into spacing these little spacers and there's you know where does which needs washers which does which bolts need washers. We just guessed. So, <laughs> anyway. Uh, and we, I planted some roses for my mom and a couple of well, a tree and a shrub and we had some people come out to look at the high tunnel build because they're building two and they had questions and right. so we did that for an hour today we talked to them about the high tunnel and yeah and the day just went by. It was busy. We did kind of get a late start. We let the, yesterday was the last day of school for Mackenzie and Grace had finished up on Tuesday. So we let the kids stay up late last night. And they really wanted to stay up really late and we made it to about 9.15 and everybody was super whiny. <laughs> we were like, all right, it's bedtime. Um, but so we kind of just let everybody sleep in and didn't really get off to our normal, usual early start. So. Right. Right. So yeah, it was a little bit of a late start this morning. Yeah. I went to town this morning. I got cake for the cows. I went out and caked the cows and checked cows and did all that kind of stuff too. Mm -hmm. So either either way, I don't know. This whole day just kind of, and I'm sure it happens to you. Um, if it doesn't happen to you, let me know how you let it not happen to you. But I mean, it just <laughs> like just the day just slipped away. We did a lot, but there's still just a lot more to do. Like this swing set's not finished. No, because I I'm really not sure what to do now. We did call the company and say, hey, we didn't get instructions, but of course, you know. Well, we you were, the back. only kids were like, is it done yet? Is it done yet? Is it ready yet? Can I jump on the trampoline yet? Is the slide ready? Lincoln was heartbroken that the slide wasn't done yet. Oh, well. The slide is the one thing that I want to make sure I put together correctly. So <laughs> one kid doesn't climb up on it and it just crashes to the ground. <laughs> uh, that would be bad. <laughs> so anyway. No. That's our day. How was your day? Um, I hope it was better than ours. So thanks oh, to everyone. I ran to town to check the post office box. Oh, yeah. He was <laughs> oh, mail time. So Aaron runs into town. And you left here at what? Like 6 like 6 or, or something. Yeah. I was like, I got to be out of here by 6 10. Flies to town, comes back, and of course there was, there was nothing, nothing. nothing in there. <laughs> there were so. some flyers for the hospital. <laughs> we could have done that. Junk mail. <laughs> Junk mail. Um, so uh, basically, that's that's our day, and I, like I said, I hope that your day went just as well. We've had some pretty cool things since our last live stream. Um, we've started a podcast, and mm -hmm. that's uh, if pod. Honestly, like I wasn't sure about doing this. Is something that actually somebody brought up last year during hang, and they said that I should do a podcast from a tractor. And I thought be about noisy. at the time it was like yeah, that probably wouldn't work. <clears throat> And plus, I couldn't see myself talking for that long, and now I can, obviously. <laughs> but uh, so we decided to start the podcast. If you haven't had a chance to check it out, I'll throw a link down in the description so you can so you can check that out as well. It's available wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. Right, actually, yeah, that part. works just as well. Just uh, if you go to iTunes or uh, wherever you're listening to iTunes, Anchor, Anchor, wherever you're listening to your, to your podcast, search for Beyond the Ranch, and uh, you'll find us right there. So that's pretty cool. Are we on Spotify? I don't know if we're on Spotify yet. Each um, each place that you put it up has to approve you for it. So iTunes was pretty quick on it. Um, Pocket Cast was pretty fast. It I, the the whole the whole podcast thing is weird because you've got to 
they're, they can be in multiple different places, you know. It's all the same. But anyway, we've had a pretty good response from that. I've also been working on the new website, and I almost got that wrapped up. And we're going to have our new website rolling out. We're going to have beef jerky on there for sale. Well, um, we have to figure out the store. The store is, I actually got the store pretty much nailed down. Um, we have to have time to ship stuff. Well, that might be interesting. Yeah, well, you know what we could do is we could call our mods, which I want to thank for hanging out with us. We've got Ron tonight. Um, I'm pretty, yep, there's Nash guy. Bob is here. Matt is hanging out with us. And I saw a guy in Wyoming earlier. Uh, that would be Blake. So if you haven't had a chance to check out his channel, head on over there. I'm pretty sure nobody else, none of our other mods have a channel, I don't think. If they did, I would definitely I plug it for you. But well, Matt doesn't. No. <laughs> You Nash should. <laughs> you should have a channel, but he does not. <laughs> so anyway, um, I, our plan tonight is to take some questions, and we're going to talk a little bit about um, the high tunnel and what's been going on there. I also have a brand new giveaway that is starting tonight, and we are going to announce the winner of the giveaway, which is worth four hundred dollars, by the way. That's a big one. Um, not on our next live stream. So in two weeks, we'll announce the winner. You have the link to sign up. I do. Oh my gosh! I, I busted that out really fast. Um, I got a lot done in an hour. I did. I was. I was rushing. <laughs> I was rushing. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna talk about that as well. So there's all kinds of cool stuff coming up tonight. So I hope you stick around. But first, let's take a couple questions, um, and uh, and get us rolling as we usually do with some little bit of Q and A. All right. All right. Go so for if it. anybody has questions, go ahead and throw it out there. Um, and now I have to look back. See. Um, oh, how are the chicks doing? How are the chicks doing? The chicks. Well, that's uh, another thing we could talk about too. If you get our newsletter, you saw an update. We're gonna do. We have. So we put video in the newsletter, and we got to figure out what to do with them because they're all unlisted, and the the general channel yeah, subscribers good. cannot. You guys can't access them unless you subscribe to the herd report, and then you get the link. Um, but we moved the chicks from the shop in their little brooder area, or I don't. It's is it a brooder? Is that what it's called? Uh, Box. The box that we keep the chicks in <laughs> in the shop, we move them into the chicken house, and they're doing really good. Right, they are. They was it was a fun little move. I'd never moved them that way. Usually, we take them out, we put them like in a dog yeah, carrier. Yeah, we just or like took the whole box. We just... took the whole box, which is on wheels. It's four by four. Stands about what six feet tall. Maybe. Yeah, I can't like seat in it. So five feet tall or four foot. <laughs> I'm not that sure. So anyway. <laughs> um, but yeah, we we hooked it up behind a four wheel and we drug it over, which was kind of an interesting thing to do. Um, the other thing that's interesting this week about the, the chickens is that we have lost a ton of our adult chickens. And yeah, that the, the is, baby chicks are fine. Baby they, chicks are fine, but we have a uh, unwelcome visitor, a murderer on the ranch, as if you will. Um, our friendly fox has been visiting. picking off chickens. And, and it's probably the chickens' fault because every spring we go through this where they don't want to go into the chicken house at nighttime. Yeah. And they want to hang out in the sales barn, and they just want to not be in the chicken house. Well, he found them in the sales barn. And we have four chicks left, four hens, right. and, and the rooster. We went from 30-some chickens to four in just a, matter just, of days. A, just a couple days. Yeah. And the bad thing is with chickens is at the beginning, you don't notice it. You mm -hmm. you know, you, there's chickens. And and yeah. Unless you're counting chickens every day, you would never and know. And they were not going in the chicken house at night. And so, I mean, we don't count every night anyhow. But yeah, I mean, so it got to be where it's like, where's all the chickens? And we set up a game camera and there's a fox. Yeah. So here's the deal. Um, this weekend's video I was I was planning on doing uh, about the chickens and the fox. But if I don't catch that little bugger, <laughs> almost, if I don't catch that, little, <laughs> that, that, that friendly little fox, um, it, it might not be about that. Because I, I would feel bad, you know, talking, ha having a video about a fox and not catching him at the end. Yeah, I mean, and he will little, not go in the box trap. No, and we've been setting traps for him every night. We set up the game camera. We're watching him, um, and he is he's smarter than I am, <laughs> or she. It could be a she. Be and then it is that time of year where they have they they're have pups, and there and she. I mean, she was just taking chickens like like mad. So that's the that's the story there. Um, but the chicks are good. Chicks and ducks are fine. They're in the chicken house, and now they're they're locked in the chicken house. They can't go anywhere. We do have a chicken run um, that we need to fix up so that they can go outside, but that's on the list as well. So, uh, Calvin, how's that going? <clears throat> we still have a few stragglers left. Uh, we are... What? You don't even know how many. I, yeah, I kind of lost count. Uh, and we're right around 120 or so right in that area. So We're getting close. We're getting close to being done. Um, a few stragglers out there hanging on that are, you know, just crossing their legs and hoping for the best. 
Um, the weather kind of has been messing with them, too, as we see these storms and stuff come yeah. in. The barometric pressure has been going up and down. So we have that kind of stuff happen all the time. And <clears throat> it, they, they, it affects, you know, how they're having their calves. And we, we have one day where we have no calves, and then the next day we'll have five or six calves. So it's still going on. It's not as... Um, it's not as tight. Well, and it's nice. So, I mean, not that you're not like checking the cows and stuff, but it's not like it is in wintertime where they get born in the snow and they get cold and, you know, so it's, it's just more of a general, is everybody okay? Kind of. Right. If they yeah. could fill out that, that sign that says, are you okay? Do you need help? What yeah. day are you going to calve? That would be nice. Yeah. We try to do that every year. None of them want to sign up for it. So. <laughs> is the rooster alive? Yeah. The rooster <laughs> is still alive. <laughs> yeah, so I kind of feel bad getting rid of them now because they, this is the, this is the thing. I'm just going to curse tonight. I, oh, I, I just like feel it right there. And this is the thing that makes me mad about that darn rooster. First of all, he hates me. Second of all, he if there miss. is something hunting the chickens, he should be the first one to die. And we would have noticed if he was gone. Right. So he's a, he's a chicken. Something. He's he's hiding. <laughs> is what he's doing. I, I go in the sales barn. He's a chicken chicken. He's a chicken chicken. <laughs> and he's and he's hiding on top of the tractor. He's he's, he's, he's way up in the rafters. He's way up in the rafters. So he's just a piece of piece of work. That's what he is. I'm having a rough day. I'm tired. I'm tired. I am a little tired, but that's okay. Um, so, hey, the, on the other on the other side, on the flip side, I think hay crop is actually looking really good. Uh, we've we got, could use more rain. We can I always mean, use more rain, but, but it's not. And we haven't had. Go ahead. Sorry. No, you're know. fine. Go ahead. We've had thunderstorms. The majority of them have gone around us. We, but every few days we've gotten a little bit of rain, and we had such a wet spring, the ground is relatively wet. So. Um, there's more rain in the forecast. It is going to hit like 91 on Sunday or something. Yeah, that'll which make is it hot. Difference. But then we have rain on set on. On Sunday. Sunday. Sunday evening. It's Sunday evening. To rain. So that and that might actually push in thunderstorms as well. And yeah. More worse weather than than that. So. Yeah. Do you have any other questions? I'm just reading this comment from Robert Gibson about the fox. Keep a small radio playing 24/7 works for me to keep coyotes away from my hens. Huh. Really. We'd like to catch them. We would like to catch him, but if he stay, I mean, honestly, the last couple days we've had the game camera out. He hasn't even came around. Well, because there's not, it's not just easy pickings. Anymore. No, true. <laughs> um, but he did the first couple days. He came and sniffed around, and he did his thing. And actually, if you subscribe to the herd report, and you can do it on our website, um, ourwyomonglife.com, you, you, there's video of him coming in and hanging out and doing his thing. And mm -hmm. uh, there was nothing for him to eat that night either because I had managed to get those four chickens along with that and stupid rooster house. into the chicken house. <laughs> and, you know, he came in, checked it out, and he left. And he did that for a few days. And then he, he came in and sniffed around the trap a little bit. But he's... He didn't go in the trap. He didn't go in the trap. So, And the bad thing is we have cats. This is the problem with cats is they trap themselves in the trap. <laughs> All the time. So we didn't even get the set the other night. There was a cat in the yeah. trap. <laughs> we just like walked out of the sales barn and there's a cat and they're trying to eat the food. Right. So interesting. Mm -hmm. So if anybody wants to come and hunt fox, I guess that's always an option too. Um, what are you drinking, Mike? I am. What am I drinking? I don't know. You made it for me. It's seven and seven. Seagram yeah. seven and seven. Sprite. Yeah. So not technically seven up. <laughs> no, it's warm. Um, how's the peacock doing? Um, really good. He goes in our yard with his leg on every day when the weather's nice. Um, we had, you know, when it thunderstorms, we put him away. Um, his girlfriend came and visited him quite a bit. And I actually took a picture of them in the yard today. And I'll probably put it on Instagram or Facebook tonight when we're done. No, tell him what happened. Because we were, I, we were what, two minutes away from starting We were like this. ten minutes okay. away. Yeah. And I, the kids are up at my mom's. And I had run pajamas and iPads up so they could have a bath and some chill time. Because they have been outside all day. And I know they're going to turn whiny real quick. Um, and so I came back and the gate was open. And he can fly, but he doesn't fly out of the yard very rarely unless, like, the dog chases him. And I was like, where's the peacock? And he hangs out underneath the trampoline and kind of wanders around a lot. So I was like, where's he at? And I couldn't find him. And I turned and I, the shop doors were open and he was in the shop. Um, and I actually, had, when I went to town, his girlfriend had left the yard. And he looked very sad that mm -hmm. his girlfriend had left. Because um, they spent quite a bit of time this afternoon together. She came over and flew in the yard. And they hung out. And so he was really looking. And we had left the gate open in our back and forth. So she left. She left. And then he, about an hour later, he just walked out. But he went into the shop. So I just went and closed the shop door. He was ready to go to bed. He knows where his house is. Yeah. I mean. And if we didn't have the fox problem, and we need to build some perches, that some flat perches, like 
like Mike had built in the sales barn um, outside and his favorite like roosting spots. But if we didn't have the fox, he would be outside. I think yeah. we just let him, his legs doing really great. Um, I would be so mad if I put all this work into that peacock and, and a fox, then fox got him. Boy, yeah. I'd be mad. He just has nowhere to go right now until we build some flat perches. Um, he just has nowhere to go and get away from any predators and stuff. And, and he likes to roost and stuff. So, yeah, we need to get some, some perches built. But he's doing really good. So mm -hmm. he's he he does get out once in a while, but he lets you catch him again. And Yeah, he's kind of funny when he's he lives in the basement of the shop. So in the morning when it's time for him to go out, I go in and I tell him to sit and, he's... and he sits and waits for me to come pick him up and I'll pick him up and bring him in the yard. Getting him out of the yard is a whole different matter because he doesn't dark, want to go. If it's dark, he's like hunkered down. If but it's like, dark, yeah. When it's like storming and stuff, then he doesn't really necessarily want to go. But there's no protection in our yard other than the trampoline. So Yeah. Um, Tim Griffith, when is the next farmer's market? June 23rd. And then July 14th, we start weekly farmer's markets. So it's still, you're still in the winter. We're still in the market. winter. <laughs> winter. And those are just once a month. <laughs> They're just once a month. So yeah, June 23rd and then July 14th, we start every week. So yeah. coming up soon. These mods are on top of it, man. Look at all this stuff they're doing. This is awesome. Yeah. Um, Sky King, do you grow garlic? I did last year. Um, I didn't plant any last fall. And I didn't plant any early this spring. I have some garlic bulbs. Oh, I just didn't plant them. Really? Yeah, they're in the and they're in, in the garage. That's the one sitting on the old washing machine in the yeah, garage? garage. I thought those were from this year. I thought you got new ones. So yeah. So much I know. Uh, I'm gonna have the space in between the high tunnels, um, and I'm not gonna plant anything this year. Maybe this fall, if I'm super ambitious, I'll plant some stuff. But I'm gonna. It's 30 feet in between the high tunnels, and it's gonna be like a nice little microclimate with quite a bit of wind protection. So I am hoping to put some like perennial vegetables in there, some rhubarb, asparagus, horseradish. Um, garlic, you know, because it won't get tilled. It'll kind of just let it be. Um, so maybe this fall I'll put in a bunch of garlic. Right. I really want to get asparagus going. <clears throat> it takes like three years. Uh, I've seen this question pop up a lot. Uh, do you sell your meat online? Actually, we don't. It all comes down to shipping cost. And when you're Kansas City Steaks or what's that other goofy one? I don't know. There's another one. Um, they must have some sort of deal going on with with if you like bulk, if you ship a lot, like you can get like a quantity discount or something. We actually we shipped a couple steaks to Los Angeles one time, and shipping was over a hundred dollars um, to get them there before they thawed. Yeah. So, so no, if you come to farmers steaks. market though, we're more than happy, and you bring a cooler, we're more than happy to load up your cooler and send you on your way. <laughs> yeah, and then you can swing out to Devil's Tower, or you can go to Yellowstone, or Mount Rushmore, or Mount Rushmore. Or, you know, come visit us on your way back from vacation and and get some meat. Yeah, exactly. <sighs> so all that. Uh, uh, I totally lost my train of thought because I saw a question out of the corner of my eye. Uh, I, I hit on early earlier. Belt buckles will actually be for sale on the website as well, and that's we Jerry, don't have them yet. Jerry asked me about that. We don't have them yet. Um, once we have them, they'll be available. And we're actually only getting five to start with. We're getting custom our Wyoming life made belt buckles with the with the logo. Right, that one right there. <laughs> so. Um, and they take, um, you know, if you guys love them and you buy all five, like that's great and amazing. They do take like six weeks because they are handmade. Mm -hmm. So you will still be able to order them, but please understand that shipping will take quite a while for right. you to get those. They so. are handmade in Ohio, I do believe. Mm -hmm. So, yes, yeah, so those will be available. Also, Jerky will be available online once I get the website done. And I honestly, I've done a lot of websites and stuff in the past, but I'm using WordPress for this one just because there's a bunch of stuff that I can, you guys don't care. There's a bunch of <laughs> stuff that I can do that I've never been able to do before so the learning curve is actually pretty steep so I think I messed with it for a couple hours yesterday and and uh, I've been getting up early and working on it here and there so it's uh it's coming it's definitely coming Jerry so we'll we've uh, ate it it's really good don't tell them that you make what? people feel bad I'm trying to sell our product you like I had some and it was really good you can't because it was yummy <laughs> I might go have one right now I am hungry <laughs> Um, um, here's one. Have you ever had an accident or a near miss in the tractor? I can't pronounce that name. Oh, uh, I don't see it. It's oh. right there. <laughs> Eon Pender, Pendergrass. Sorry. Why is he a mod? It's not a, it's not a mod. I don't know why they have the blue wrenches. That's weird. Okay. Um, anyway. Have There's I... been a lot of comments with blue wrenches, but their names aren't blue. That's really weird. At least for us, anyway. Anyway, you guys, again. Don't care. Uh, <laughs> close calls in the tractor. You've almost tipped it over. 
I have almost tipped the tractor a couple times. Um, Mostly when you try and carry too many bales. Mm -hmm. We've had... Have you ever ran into anything? I almost ran you into a, a hoop today. On you did. Run. That was pretty funny. <laughs> uh, my biggest fear with the tractor actually is when I'm out feeding and we have calves on the ground. Mm -hmm. um, that you'd and, run over a calf? That you run over a calf. Because they do tend to just kind of go wherever they, they're like... They're like four girls. They just go, oh, oh, oh shiny. And they'll they'll run right in front of a tractor. That's my biggest fear. Um, I don't think I've had any really, really close calls. Though. No, you've almost tipped it a few times. A few I mean, times. or not almost tipped it, but, oh, you did lose a door. I did lose a door. The that wind. Was, that was the wind's fault, not mine. <laughs> Open it. <laughs> and, yeah, opened the door and the wind took it. Bam. And those doors are glass and they are thick glass. And when they break, they explode and scare the crap out of you. And we've lost gator doors, too. We've lost gator. Yeah, I have never... Have I ever lost a gator door? Hired hands. Hired lost hands have lost gator, <laughs> gator doors. doors. Yeah, usually... But we'll, you did lose the tractor door. I did lose the tractor door. That was exciting. <laughs> you have to... When the wind's blowing 60 miles an hour, you have to be strategic about which way... And you don't think about it sometimes. Yeah. You know, so. uh, we just got a super chat. Um, oh, if that's we're right. not I, answering your question, you can throw up a super chat. It's super bold. We see it. Do you know dogs on the farm? No, this is a brand new, I've never seen a question before. Uh, do you feed your bummer calves milk replacer? We do. We do powdered milk replacer. I'm not sure of the brand. though. Whatever the brand. feed store has. You know I've heard, is? no, it's blue and white is the package. If you send me an email, I'll, I'll find out um, the brand name for you. And it, it seems to work really well. We yeah. we do wean our bottle calves early. They're going to get fed creep. Yeah, and we'll switch them over to a small little pellet, which is called creep. Because milk replacer is so expensive. It is super expensive. And it they go through it so fast. It's $70 for a 50 pound bag. And is that it, what it is, really? Yeah. Oh my and gosh. And how fast is a bag? How long does a bag? I mean, we have four. I mean, we're feeding four bums right now. Somebody said today that we should get a milk cow. I agree. Yeah, you get a milk cow. Just to feed the bums. We'll make it work. I'll talk to my mom. Mom, you want to buy milk cow? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, yeah. So they go through it super fast. Um, so we wean at like six to eight weeks, and just we'll like cut them down. Like they get two bottles in the morning, two bottles at night. They'll go to one bottle at each, and we'll do that for a few weeks, and then start offering them creep. And you're gonna kind of make them go hungry. They do to, to get them the started on the creep because they're not gonna want to eat it. Yeah. But they'll slowly work their way into it. So yeah, we usually start weaning six to eight weeks somewhere in there. Yeah. Depending on the calf, I mean, obviously there's there's some age difference too, and between the oldest and the youngest. So, mm -hmm. exactly. yeah. Do your homework, man. Random stuff should be doing his homework, but he's watching us instead. You still have school? I'm sorry, we're done. A lot of places go to school a lot later than we Casper do. Casper goes to like June seventh or something. We're done. Yeah. As of yesterday. I know that Nash guy is still in school. He doesn't get out until like June something. Isn't Nash guy old? <laughs> she called I mean, you not, old, dude. Not like school age. <laughs> it's been a rough day. June eighth, random stuff gets out of school. Oh yeah, that's rough. I'm sorry. Why do our kids get out of school? Well, we so early? start like August twenty third or something ridiculous too. Like we start really early in August. Yeah. My watch is supposed to All right. You know what? John Smith, that's actually a really good point there. If you use a couple question marks when you ask a question, it actually makes it easier for us to see them as they are flowing by. Yeah. And we're sorry if we don't answer your question. It comes through really fast, and Mike gets off on tangents and talks a lot. So, Really? You want to get her started? Somebody ask a farmer's market <laughs> question, and I'll, I'll just be back in about a half an hour. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um... Homie, I can't pronounce your last name. I should have been. I, I could never have been a teacher because I can't pronounce names. But Homie says, hello from North Carolina. Enjoy your channel a lot. Thank you. Homie has commented quite a bit, and he's oh. always got great comments. And, and that one's uh, all caps. <laughs> Easy to see. But I hope you're not yelling at us. Yeah, don't yell. <laughs> um, if you never actually do go through some of the comments, if you watch a video, a good example, a great example right now is, well, I could give you a couple. There's one where there's a vegan thing going on right now this Girl is funny mushrooms. because videos that, that have come out you know six months ago we still get alerts when we get a comment we, I, yeah. I, I actually have it set so every time somebody sends a comment i get i get it on my phone i'm able to answer it right away usually and 
So when somebody goes back to an old video and starts like a fight on there, or there's some sort of argument, I guess it's the same thing as a fight. But <laughs> I, I get them, and then I watch them sometimes because it's, it's kind of interesting. And we just typically stay out of them. I usually try stuff. to stay out of it. But um, the the new one, the new video I put out last week of the jackalope and the snipe hunting, and which was just for funsies, really. <laughs> I was so that last week was so busy, and I was just like, I don't want to do anything. We're in this Serious. weird like transition time too, between like cabin still happening. We're building the high tunnel, and we talk about that every Tuesday. You know, we're just in this weird transition like season right now and stuff too. Like, yeah, the I mean, ranch work is very like there's no focus right now. <laughs> it's all over the place. I've got fence that needs fixed. I've got all kinds of stuff that I should be doing and I'm not. Um, but I just wanted to do something fun. And somebody made a comment, "Well, you got sure you got a lot of time on your hands." And I said, "I wish," because actually that video I was up until four a.m. Yeah. Three or four. Getting it done and wrapped up so it could come out at Yeah, seven I mean, like, Friday morning. night, like, you worked on what you were going to talk about and made an outline. And then we worked Saturday morning, I think, on High Tunnel. And that afternoon, I helped you film a little bit. Mm -hmm. And you went out and filmed more. And then you were up super late. And that's when the Sunday videos get edited, is typically... Saturday night. Usually, if I'm not, if I if I'm way ahead of myself, which I never am. What am I talking about? They're always they're usually edited on Saturday night. I'm never ahead of myself. That's. Uh... Hey, we got another super chat. Oh, cool! Uh, this one from uh, Billy Billy Badass. Hey, you got to cuss. Hey, awesome! <laughs> uh, Pre-orders available for Belt Buckle. I guess I never thought about that. I, I'm afraid if I took pre-orders, then I would not have any to sell with the website. I kind of want to. This is totally like. Not really egotistical, but it's like, you know, I want to put them on the website. I want them to be on the website. I don't know why, because the only thing that's going to be on there is beef jerky. And so belt buckles. No, but as soon as our website launches, we'll let you guys know. Yeah, there's going to be... And thank you for the super chat. Yes, Billy thank you very us. much, uh, Billy. We we plan on try, trying to get everybody to know as quick as possible when the, when the website goes live. I might even do it. I might even put it on during a live stream and just say, hey, you know... I don't know if I could do that at the same time. I'd have to figure out how to do it. But, you know, there could be a chance that I could switch it. Aaron, when are you doing the video for the ice cream? People want to know how to make ice cream. It's not that hard. It's really not that hard. Um, yeah, so I, I just find a recipe I like. And I sometimes I make custard ice creams where you, you know, cook it and use eggs and, and temper your eggs and make a delicious custard. Like my vanilla, I use custard because I use heavy cream and ranch eggs and then other times it just use like cream and milk and like my favorite is mint chocolate chip and some mint extract and some <coughs> shaved chocolate um i have a continuous freeze ice cream maker so i don't have like the bowl that you have to freeze i have one that just has a compressor in it and i can just churn and churn and churn and churn um but it's very simple and i mean you can get ice cream makers at walmart and they usually come with like some recipes in them and yeah it's easy. But she could still do a video about it, people, right? Come on. Even if there is, if you can get it at Walmart and there's a recipe book, she could still make a video about how yeah, to do I mean, it. Yeah, Mike said yesterday's, uh, you should do a cooking recipe or a cooking video. And it's like, ah, but it's all garden season right now and I need to be in the garden. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'll work on it. I don't know when it's coming, but I'll work on it. <laughs> I know you've been asking for a long time, and yeah, I'm sorry. That's a fry pan cookies have been very popular. Yeah. People want you to cook, man. I am going to, this winter, we talked about this, and it'll be available on our website. I'm going to write, like, a little 10 or 15 recipe, like, e-book, cookbook. I don't know why I said e-book in quotations. <laughs> that's the other thing that we can do um, when we uh, open up the store on the website is that we're going to be able to sell virtual. Virtual. Virtual items. I want to bounce something off of you guys while I have you here. Uh, Matt, one of our moderators, um, lives in Chicago. Not that that has anything to do with this, not, and not against him or anything. He just happens to live there and has lived there his entire life and lived on the same block practically his entire life. But Whatever. Grace his... tells me that she's going to live on the ranch forever. That's cool. I'm done with that. So I have this idea uh, for something to sell. Have I told you about this? No. Um, to, to you make... did this last night. We recorded the podcast last night, too, and you're like, oh, let me tell you the story. I didn't tell you this during the podcast. You should tell me beforehand. Why? It's more fun just to get your reaction. Because now you're going to be like, that's stupid. <laughs> man cards. Our Wyoming oh, no, life man cards. <laughs> Matt got a man card. <laughs> Matt did get a man card. I sent it to him. It um, should have been revoked. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can revoke it at any time because I bought it. Um, but 
Man card. I was thinking about doing man cards on the website. Yeah, I just said you have do to like, like a pack of ten for like five bucks. You have or to something. like ranch customize them or something. Yeah, it might be interesting. If somebody was interested in, if you're interested, let me know, and then you'll get my get my get a fire lit underneath me. So, I've heard seen this question a lot from Brian Yonker. Whatever happened to number thirteen's mom? Oh, sorry, we were Brian. able to foster a calf on her. Did you sell her? I saw that as well. Sorry, Brian. Um, we ended up talking to the vet about her. And his suggestion was that we didn't put anything on her because what he thought was maybe she just had bad milk or had uh, mastitis or some sort of infection or something like or that. Or no milk. Because she had never had, like, a huge bag. No. So um, she'll so, get sold. She'll, pro well. she'll more than likely be sold. Yeah. Is she out with the cows? Yeah, I kicked her out. Yeah. yeah. So she'll get sold in the fall. Yeah, the only cows in the corral right now are 80. 92, who, if you think way back, 92, I brought in this fall. She had a limp. I brought her in and put her in the corrals, and she's in there with her calf. And Twin mom. Twin mom, 14, and with uh, thing one and thing two. And they're both still in And they could probably actually go out. I'm thinking they're about to the point where they you can go out. think she can take care of both of them in the field? They're old, in the great big wild? They're old enough that they can go out and eat, too. So, you know. All right. That's kind of my thought Matt process Matt says there. that he uh, has hidden his man card. Ah, oh, I know where it's at. It's in his wallet. Guaranteed. Uh, um, Data Phantom, hello. I would like to know how your little egg scrubber is holding up. It's doing great. You know, yeah. We only have four chickens right now. So it's, <laughs> it's not getting a whole lot of work right now. It's not getting a lot of use. But, um, you know, it's, it's, it's worked great every time we've used it. I love it. Yeah. I think it makes the job so much easier. And it's exactly what we needed you know, we can spend $1,500 on an egg washer. It's much more affordable. And I think it works great for anybody that's in the like 20 to a couple hundred, up to maybe two or 300 chickens. You know, and you're just selling locally at farmer's market or whatever. I think it works great. Like it makes the really whole good. process so much easier. I am so glad that we have it. Like when those 60 chicks start laying and we're getting 20 to 30 eggs a day or 40 eggs a day, like we're gonna, we're gonna really test that thing. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we are. But it's it. so far, it's been, it's everything that I I could ask for in an egg washer. It works right. great. Um, one of the things, too, is if you do uh, contact those guys, Chris is a great guy. He he came up with this because he had a problem. Um, and he had the same problem we did. He was just more ambitious than I was. <laughs> um, he, he said, I have this many chickens. I'm tired of washing eggs. How can I make this easier? And he came up with this idea. And he's he lives in Vermont. Vermont, I do believe. Might be wrong on that one. I thought it I think was it's, Texas. No, it's Vermont. <laughs> um, but yeah, he came. He saw a problem. And he came up with a solution, and now, I mean, he's he seems to be doing really well with it. So I'm I'm, yeah. I'm happy for him as well. I mean, it's, it's it's perfect. It's a great little thing. So, oh, Melissa wants to know what a man card is. Well, you you're the one that's gonna make man cards, so go right ahead. So a man card is um, a joke. Is what it is. <laughs> but it's basically anytime somebody does, and you know what, you can have a woman's card too. You could, or a woman could have a man's card. I don't care. Um, but anytime you do something that is not considered manly, another man can take your man card, or another person could take your man card. Yep. So if you, for example, just off the top of my head, if you watched the royal wedding last week, somebody could take your man card. Was that last week or this week? I don't even I know what it was. Last week. Yeah. So if you if you got up at you know three a.m. or four a.m. and watched it. Um, somebody could take your man card. So that's that's uh, my example. <laughs> anyway, how is Bambi? Bambi is great. Thank you, Rich McBurney. She did not tip over last week. She did not. The, I was going to talk. This is this is where I was going with this. Like, read the comments because not like I was saying. There's fights going on and that kind of thing in old videos. But the the Jackalope video, like, there's some comments where I don't know if people didn't get it was a joke. Maybe I didn't play it off. Maybe I should have laughed more throughout the entire thing. I don't know. Maybe I should have had a, a grin on my face. But um, there were some people that were kind of a little bit angry. Not really angry. Well, again, you did it wrong. Again, I did it wrong, of course. Of course. I could, but there were funny stories, too. There was like some great Other people stuff. taking other people out cow tipping and snipe hunting. And, yeah, I mean, it was funny. But there was some other stuff that was like, again, you still did it wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, of course I did it wrong. Uh, it doesn't matter. I pronounced per, purling wrong in the, in the last video. We've always called them purloins. 
Perlins. I guess I just never Perlins. really thought about They're it. called Perlins. Apparently, we've been educated. We have been. We appreciate it if you do it in a nice way. Yeah. When you're mean about it, we get a little irritated. <laughs> we, I mean, we are not construction people, okay? Like, and I don't know. Well, I got the same thing for the laser level. I call transit. it a transit. You know, it's not That's a transit, it's, it's a laser level. And there is a regional difference, too, I think, between like what things are called. The funny thing is... Cow I'm, cake is a big one. That oh, people get mad about cake and if range I call it cubes. cake and range cubes. And yeah, there's that. It's a regional thing. Anyway, I feel like we're going off on a tangent. So here. we said, you said Perlin's wrong. I did say Perlin's. Perlin's. Hey, Terry's here. Hey, Terry, uh, how's that Corvette treating you? Uh, are you going to Cheyenne Frontier Days? No. Probably not. Uh, we have three kids and a ranch. And... <laughs> No. No. <laughs> uh, when was the last time we were at Cheyenne Frontier Days? Probably when we lived in Cheyenne. When we lived in Cheyenne at <laughs> the first the short time. time. Yeah. It's uh, it's fun though if you do get a chance to go and hang out in Cheyenne Cheyenne Frontier Days. It's it's a lot of fun. I don't even know who's going to be there this year. I, don't know. I see a really good comment. Paradise Found Farms little egg scrubber is awesome. Bought one right after seeing it your video and watched three hundred plus dozen with it. That's a lot. Totally worth the money. I'm glad it's working out for you. One day. How many do you do? How many kids you do in a day with it? I don't know. I think it was like, I, there was a... It was like three minutes for a dozen or something. Yeah. Man, that's crazy. It's not, that's awesome, though, that it's working. Glad to have connected you to the little egg scrubber. Right. We're over halfway through. I want to tell you guys about our next giveaway. Now, oh. if you've been um, snooping around, you could, you could go down in the description, and I actually already snuck a link for it down in there. You can go down to the description and check it out. And our next giveaway actually came from the very cool people at FLIR. If you, FLIR makes thermal imagers, and we've made a couple. <laughs> we both look like we were in the sun all day with we sunglasses been, on. We have been in the sun all day. <laughs> we pull the chat window up full screen so we can see it easier, so we don't really actually see our faces that much. But Mike just switched it so we can see what you guys see. <laughs> people are like... <laughs> Take off the sunglasses, man. <laughs> so anyway, uh, FLIR is a company that makes the thermal imager that we use during calving quite a bit. And there we are looking through the thermal imager at a calf out in a field. Uh, that's the calf there. And I don't know why I went and left this in here. But then I went and picked it up. And it's cold. there's some more cows. And anyway, that is the FLIR, the FLIR thermal imager. Now, the folks at FLIR are awesome. They got wind of what we were doing, how we were using it, and they contacted us and they said, this is... Oh. <laughs> I forgot that was in there. Uh, that cow's peeing. That cow was peeing like a beast. Um, so they... Uh, it's like they, a waterfall. Yeah. It threw me off my game. I wasn't expecting that. Uh, they contacted us and they... They said, we love what you're doing yeah. with the Flinger. Uh, it's, and they actually said it's like an avenue that they really haven't seen before. It's amazing, though, for you during cabin awesome. in those storms. You know, It's even at night it's awesome because I can go out and park on a hill and go, is there any cabs out there or any cows out there? And if there's not... I don't have to drive over that way. You know, it saves me. And in the wintertime, like it can be nice during the day and we get a storm that rolls in at nighttime and they'll all come in and go to the shed. But if there's a calf that's sleeping and doesn't get woke up, it gets left out there. Mm -hmm. So it's the mom player. gets mad and we have all kinds of problems. So anyway, um, so in the description, there's a link, there is a link and you can win. They sent us this. Now this, you this go back to the screen so you can actually make sure that you're showing. <laughs> they sent us this. This is the FLIR one. Now, this isn't the one that I use. This one actually plugs into your phone, and it allows you to use your phone as a thermal imager. This thing runs, I looked it's it so up cool. on Amazon, it was like 400 bucks. It was awesome of us, awesome of them to send it to us. I don't know if they were sending it to me, to like for me to use, but I don't, I'm, I'm giving it to you guys. So you can hit the description down there and sign up to win this, and we will have a, uh, a winner in yeah. two weeks. And there's all kinds of uses that like you don't maybe traditionally. Well, you don't have of, to have cows. Don't yeah. go, you know, I mean, this thing you can, uh, well, there's, there's a, there's, you can look it up online. FLIR One Pro, but there's a picture right there on there. They're looking at a tire for some reason, and there's a hot tire. Uh, you can look at um, your, house. your house and see where you're losing heat out of your house. And you know, if you have a window that's leaking, I mean, this is actually you, kind of a cool and thing. And for like electrical too, like if you have a wire that's hot, right? Mm -hmm. I don't, I'm not an electrician. Yeah, you can you can look at your walls and see if you have hot wiring. If you have something that's miswired, uh, there could be a hot spot that could be 
So there's Very bad. Uh, yeah, all kinds of uses, and not just cows, but you know, all kinds of things. And I think on FLIR's website, they'll probably even tell you more stuff of what you can do with the FLIR one. And it just plugs into your phone. It is for an iPhone. Right. They they asked me. They said, um, should we send you one for an iPhone or a Android? And I was kind of hoping they would send us one of each, but they did not. So uh, we have one for an iPhone. So, But if you know somebody that has an iPhone, you can still sign up, even though you have an Android, and everybody knows somebody that has an iPhone. This We're be... sorry it's not for Android. Like, they didn't send us both, and they right. only work on one or the other. So, um, yeah, for iPhone. So, you know, if you have an Android and you win, you know, I guess you can get an iPhone. Yeah, and that's what's awesome. I love what we're doing because I don't think that, you know, first of all, we're not doing this to make ourselves rich or anything like that. We're doing something to uh, further agriculture and further what, you know, yeah. and, and, and people's awareness and stuff like that. I think companies like this see that. I think, yeah, it's amazing that FLIR, like, has, you know, appreciates what we're doing and can see their product being used in a different manner and say, hey, give this away or yeah. you know use it well yeah i don't know if they wanted me to give it away or they wanted me to use it but i'm i'm giving it away because you yeah. guys are worth it and i'm honestly i have one that's like does what i need it to do so yeah. and i can look at my walls with mine if i really wanted to so um somebody said uh ryan uh martinage uh, said they use the flare to find coins on the beach great oh. uh, great to go right after twilight on the beach and you can see the hot coins because they oh, it's still, they, yeah. they soak up the the heat from the that makes sense. That you could toilet. go treasure hunting. You could, if it's on you the you could surface. find yourself a dime. All those nuts with and this, oh. you could find a rare dime. All those nuts and bolts that you lost in my mom's ass today. <laughs> we were we were working on a stupid swing set today, and like the, <laughs> or the, the high girl, channel. The girls How many were stuff to did me. you drink, drop on when we were building the purlins? Perlins <laughs> the high tunnel too. We just started, we got towards the end on the last one, and we're like, we need nuts and bolts. <laughs> yeah, we we're like, we're out. <laughs> Yeah. So I honestly go down, sign up for it. Um, I think, uh, oh crap, I forgot to change one thing in there though. Um, I'm going to set it up so that you have, that you can visit Flair's website, and get an entry as well, because I think I left it on, I, what I, okay. So on this stupid program nobody that we cares. use for, nobody cares. This program that we use for, for giveaways, I copied and pasted the, uh, uh, the belt buckle giveaway awesome. that we did, which we actually have our winners all lined up for and everything. Um, congratulations to our winners. I don't have the list in front of me, but uh, I copied and pasted, and I think I left the part of there where if you visit our belt buckles website, you can get a sign up for the Flitter one. So, long story short, I'll change that. But uh, for now, you can sign up just by visiting a belt buckles website. So, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Isn't that nice? This is the problem with going like crazy. So. Use the flare to find the fox. You could go out at night and see if he's around the property anywhere. I could. He's quick. Aaron and I saw him. Uh, we went out to check cows together and uh, came up over a hill, and there he was. And boom, he was gone. Or she. There was a dead fox on the highway the other day, and I got really excited, but then he came back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that wasn't him. But somebody told us there is a den about a mile or so yeah. down the road, and that could be part of the, his tribe or uh, his herd or whatever you want to call it. But... Uh, who knows? There could be multiple ones as well. But yeah, you could go out at night and see if there's any predators in the pasture. Yeah. So the Colin could Ashmore do something really cool. said that. So oh. thanks, Colin. Thanks, Colin. <laughs> All right. So um, how's the high tunnel coming along? Brian Peterson wants to know. Oh, that one I do have a picture for. Oh, you um, did get a picture. For? I did get a picture for, and I can throw it up here really quick. I seriously look like you've been in the sun with sunglasses on all day. <laughs> so the high tunnel is this right now. It is. All the struct, the main the structure, frame, the frame. The frame is done. Is done. We actually made a lot of progress in the last few days. And we've been delayed by thunderstorms. And Mike one day was like, I feel staticky up here. <laughs> so he was putting for I did. I was, I was, I was, I was, was I in the bucket of the tractor at yeah. that time? Which is, you know. OSHA approved. OSHA. I don't know. <laughs> See, this is, the, I was thinking about it today when I was up in the bucket of the tractor. And I'm and 12 this will, feet We'll show you guys all of this on Tuesday. Right. So I'm up in the bucket of the tractor and I'm thinking, would I rather be in the bucket of the tractor or would I rather be on a ladder? The bucket I'd of the tractor. I'd rather be on the bucket of the tractor. Because when we built the first high tunnel, me and Tyler, who was the ranch hand at the time, we were in the bucket and we were doing purlin. And purlin. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember climbing up on ladders and helping. And then, like, finally we just got up in the bucket. I felt much safer in the bucket. I don't know about you. I mean, you climbed up and down a lot of ladders. 
I mean, but I was, Mike drove the tractor when I was in the bucket. Mm-hmm. I had to drive the tractor. It's a right. little jerky. <laughs> and and uh, really quick, I want to go back to a quick question. You don't actually have to be a part of our, on Facebook or anything like mm-hmm. that to enter. All you have to do is click that link down in the description. And if you don't get it, I will get it to you. Somebody's calling me from Cody, Wyoming. You um, get more entries if you like us on Facebook, or if you visit us on Facebook, if you visit us on Instagram. But you, 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 get get more a, you get entries just for being a subscriber if you go in and, and say, hey, I'm a subscriber. Um, and it verifies that. It does. It's very so fancy. It is very fancy. <laughs> so. um, all right. Colin Ashmore also wants to know, last try, LOL. I've seen your question. I'm sorry. Um, do you have any advice on buying and raising bottle calves to feed out and sell? We have a few Holstein cows to support them. Do you think it is worth the investment in time? If you, if have, you have a to cow feed to them, feed it, heck yeah. 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 Hey, Heck yeah. Jinx. Jinx. <laughs> um, you know, we're feeding milk replacer. But yeah, I would do it. If we had a milk cow. Yeah. We need a milk cow. How many how many calves can you put on one milk cow? I don't know. It depends on the breed probably, but you can probably put three or four cows on. Do you know how many mil- how many bum calves you can put on a milk cow? Feel free 37. to Thirty seven. Thirty <laughs> seven. Um all right, let's see. What else do we got for questions? Uh, Chad Rankin wants to know what uh, drone do you use? Oh, no, that's Chris for me. Rankin. Or could Chase, what did I say? Chris, Chad. What, I said Chad. Chris. We know a Chad Rankin. We do know a Chad Rankin. That's you weird. You know a Chris Rankin, too. I do know do a Chris. Do you live in Gillette, Chris <laughs> Rankin? <laughs> um, uh, what drone am I using? The Phantom 3? Three? 3 is what I'm the doing. Four is, the Mavic is the fancy one. The Mavic is the fancy one. No, mine's. Uh, old one but it's the Mavic DJI Mavic 3 is what I'm using for most of the the drone footage would you when ever, I'm not standing on top of a tractor uh, would you ever consider snapchat I don't know how to use snapchat <laughs> the kids use snapchat they don't snapchat they just no, like the filters they do the faces <laughs> thing on it uh, we do have a snapchat account I did make one yeah, we don't for our that. Wyoming life we've never actually used it so I don't know how to use it I barely know how to I, I know how to use Facebook Wyoming's like super behind the times I don't use we got Instagram when we start the channel <laughs> I don't know how to use snapchat I have friends that use snapchat I just don't know how to do it all right um three to five is how many cabs you can put on a boat oh there you go and if you, I, I imagine it does make, I don't know if it makes a difference between a Jersey or a, or a Holstein. Does it make or, a difference between a Jersey and a Holstein? I've heard their milk is different. Jerseys are richer, more cream. Oh, really? Right? We don't know much about milk cows. <laughs> we, nobody has, I mean, there's few people there's that have few. milk cows in this area. Very few. Very few. Yeah. A lot if of we people wanted have, a milk cow, where would we go to get a milk cow? I have no idea. Facebook. <laughs> wanted milk cow. <laughs> <laughs> will work for food. Um, all right. <sighs> More questions. Have you ever considered putting cover crops in your fields for later winter grazing? Truckman. We don't do any cover crops, and it's definitely something that we could look into at some point. Um, the rain's going to, not that we've had an abundance of rain, but come like the end of June, the rain dries up. So we'd have to find something that's like super drought tolerant that would make it till fall. It's definitely something we could look into. We don't have a drill. No, we don't have a drill. That would make a big difference. Um, and one of the, you know, there's just here, it's not really a farming type atmosphere. Farm. No, we just there's, graze. There's not much of it. Corn will not grow here. Um, there are every, mushrooms will not grow here. Every once in a while, you'll run into somebody who's planting, you know, has some weeds. wheat or peas or something like that. Yeah. But it's very, very hit or miss, and God, that's a lot of money to sink into something that's just a huge gamble. Yeah, don't you agree? Yeah, we just don't get consistent rain at all, so it's just hard to, you know, it'd have to be something that's very drought, very drought tolerant. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, topic for next podcast. Thanks, Tim, for uh, reminding me that I was going to talk about the podcast a little bit more. Go ahead. I just, go ahead. You have something on your mind? No, just go. Okay. Um, the we are we are doing a podcast now. Topic for the next podcast. We've actually we recorded it last night, and it's pretty much all about before it's coming a, to yeah. the ranch and how we've shared with you guys. This is the thing that we can do with the podcast that we can't do anywhere. First of all, we can sit around in our underwear. Which is awesome. We don't. Um, we don't. But it would be cool if we did. Um, 
<laughs> we can talk about things that you know don't ever make it to videos or don't make it to the live stream yeah um we can talk about the 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 back history and what we did before and how actually we felt coming to the ranch yeah it's like it's kind of about the choice to come to the ranch the the podcast that will go out tomorrow it's a, it's about the choice to come to the ranch and, and that moment of decision of where we we took that leap of faith and and what we were feeling at the time and then you know a, a year later when an opportunity came along that we could have left the ranch and and just the the wobble of the path that brought us to today mm -hmm. and you guys have been with us now for over a year but there's a lot of things, of course, that happened between, you know, leaving corporate radio to coming, you know, before we started on YouTube. And so the podcast is kind of all about that and some pivotal moments that kind of changed, changed things for us and, and kept us here. And yeah. Yeah. Sneak peek or spoiler alert. But uh, the first couple of years we were here, we weren't planning on being here yeah. any longer than that. So and that changed. Tomorrow. What time does the podcast come out? I don't know. Whenever I decide to push a button. What time should the podcast come out? Noon. Noon. Oh, no, no. Don't tell me that because then I'll, I'll lose it. Uh, so, yeah, tomorrow in the podcast, it'll be out on Anchor and iTunes and what's the other one? Uh, Pocket Casts and I don't know. I, we'll Facebook it. <laughs> yeah, we'll put it on Facebook. And you can always search for Beyond the Ranch on your favorite podcast playing device. Yeah. So somebody asked about Gilbert and... Uh, hopefully, it's not too personal of a question from Danielle. Uh, is Gilbert Aaron's dad? No. Gilbert was my stepdad. And they got... Gilbert was around the whole time I was, like, in high school. And then I went to college, and they got married my sophomore year. So I was 20, 19, um, when they got married. Um, I think I was a junior in high school when I met Gilbert. So I was, like, 16. Um... And they were married. My mom and Gilbert were married for 10 years. So, but he was my stepdad. Yeah. Yeah. And we do talk about Gilbert in the podcast a little bit. Yeah. Because obviously him, when we, spoiler alert, when we <laughs> came to the ranch, like I said, we were only planning on being here for a short amount of time. And Gilbert was the one that could pretty much convinced me to stay. Yeah. I mean, not, not so much a short amount of time, like not like just months, but I mean, not like permanently short no. amount of time. No, it was never a plan. So. All right. Uh, Landon Pratt. If, hey, if you had the chance to have Holstein, would you guys have Holsteins? I would have a Holstein. You wouldn't have a herd of Holsteins. It's tough here because <laughs> Angus is like the bread and butter of we, this area. I mean, we're obviously not set up to like be a commercial milk or, no, or anything. God, no. And we don't have the feed to, to feed. I ideally, like, I mean, in part of my local food empire empire is what i call it but you know i mean i have plan I, I have hopes to expand beyond vegetables and beef and pork i would love to do pasteurized meat products and you can sell raw milk in wyoming and raw cheese raw milk cheese products and stuff but i want to do pasteurized milk um i support the right to to buy raw milk if you want to buy raw milk and but we don't we don't consume raw milk um, my dad drank raw milk and i used to have to drink it as a kid Oh, it's not our I didn't thing. Like it at all. I I love that. You Wyoming, ever tried raw milk? Yeah. Oh. I love that Wyoming has food freedom and that you can buy raw milk because I think you should have that choice. Mm. But it's not our choice. So um, I would have I would have milk cows if I could if I had the facilities to pasteurize. And I really want to make cheese. Like I really really want to make cheese. But it costs a lot of money to pasteurize and be inspected and licensed and have the facilities and like. I want to make like cheddar. I would make soft cheeses and fast cheeses, but like cheddar has to age for like a year or two. So you need holding for that too. Speaking of which, where's the cat? I don't know. Cheddar. Cheddar's our cat. Cheddar's our cat. <laughs> not that I'm not paying attention or anything, but my mind does wander occasionally. So, so yeah, I mean, I would, I would have a Holstein. I would have a Jersey. I mean, I'm not, I do want a Holstein. I would probably have a Holstein and a Jersey. And if we had a Holstein, it would probably be the most babied cow in the world. Well, that's what you're supposed to do. I'm sure it would live in the barn. Probably Aaron would. Well, you have to it. milk it twice a day, so it's got to be close. I'm mm -hmm. not going to go down three acres and or three, three mi acres. three miles away and milk the cow. True, but it would probably be in the yard at some. It point. wouldn't be in the yard. Um, kids would ride it. Who knows? Um, dog Matt. Uh, I don't know what your name is. <laughs> How well, does raw meat, milk? Dog meat. Oh, you're smarter than me. How does I can read license plates too. How does raw milk taste in comparison to pasteurized milk? The texture's different. It's, the texture's different. It's a lot. 
heavier. Well, there's cr the cream floats to the top. And I remember Gilbert getting raw milk. And he would just scoop the cream off and then toss the rest. But the milk texture is a lot different than like 2%. More like skin, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah. But then you get the cream on top. Yeah. It's different. It's... And it just tastes different. Yeah. Um, somebody said something about uh, putting the podcast on YouTube. And there are people that do record podcasts and put them on YouTube. I don't know. We talked about maybe... Uh, recording so, like some video of a podcast yeah. and showing it here and there um so like mike was saying earlier like we put it on anchor and that's where we have to load to and then everybody else has to approve it so we were hoping a few more places would approve it and then hopefully next week we'll make a short little video and put all the links and stuff for you guys on youtube and record us recording the podcast kind of make a promo <laughs> for the podcast yeah. the other cool thing that i that i should but, bring up oh, go, oh, go ahead, ahead. No, it's going? just really nice to not be on camera. Like it was late. It is always late. My hair, not that I look super great right now because I have raccoon eyes, but you know, like my hair was a mess. It was late. It was like 10, it was super late. It was like 1030 when we recorded it last night. <laughs> really late. Um, the other cool thing that you can find it, if you go, if you have an iPhone and you have, an, uh, you have an Android or whatever, if you search for Anchor FM, the app Anchor FM, that's who we're actually doing um the podcast through anchor is our anchor. and they like distribute it they distribute it for us one of the really cool things you can do on there though is if you go and listen um you can leave us a voicemail on the app which is awesome so you could ask a question just like you're doing here but you could answer you could ask a question that we will answer during our we nobody's done it yet no i'm kind of i'm kind of excited for somebody to try it um, you can you can ask us a question. We'll put it in the podcast and answer that question in the podcast. So if you want to give that a spin, um, you can. And of course, if you, while you're there, you might as well you know give it some stars, maybe one yeah, or two. Rate it. Rate it. Give a give a you know you can you can do reviews on iTunes. All that kind of stuff helps us. So yeah. Um, okay, I've seen this question a lot. Random stuff. How many square feet is your big garden? It is Over like eight thousand. Yeah, it's sixty-four feet wide by. Um, I figured this out. It's it's like eight thousand two hundred and. Yeah, sixty-four feet remember. wide, one hundred and thirty feet long. It's big. With the second high tunnel in production this year, we'll have fifteen thousand square feet. Of gardens. Yeah, which is only a third of an acre, but when that's all taken care of by hand, that's a lot. Think about how big your house is in comparison to fifteen thousand square feet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, Anything else you wanted to hit on tonight? We're coming up on that hour point that we always aim for. We always blow past like it's a cop sitting next to a sign on the interstate. But is there any? Is there anything, Aaron? Oh, we didn't. Goodness. We haven't talked about this yet. And I wanted to talk about this because I got an email this week. From oh, oh, here's a question, real quick. Gonzalo Guzman. Guzman. I don't have a cell phone. How am I going to get the podcast? If you have, a, if you're watching this on a computer, go to Anchor FM. Anchor FM. Dot com. Anchor FM. Anchor dot FM. Oh. I think. Or just Google Anchor FM. Google Anchor FM. You can actually listen to it on there. You can listen to it right on your computer. So. Cool. Okay. Sorry. Um, oh, man. Something okay. Funny. So I got an email this week um, from a somebody who used to comment a lot and kind of just dropped off the face of the earth. And... I, I remember thinking a couple times, oh, I haven't heard from him in a long time. I'm not going to say his name, but I haven't heard from him in a long time. And the other day I got an email from him oh. and he explained to me where he is and what happened. So I don't have the email in front of me, so I can't read it verbatim. But this this ties into, we've talked about Aaron. Aaron was in Casper a couple weeks ago mm -hmm. talking about food insecurity. And that's one of our big things that we really do want to push that, you know, everybody has the right to a meal. Yeah. And, and not just a box of mac and cheese, like healthy food. Right, right. And that's where, you know, he explained to me in this email that basically he had to make the choice of I'm going to either, you know, have the internet or I'm going to eat. And, you and obviously you eat. chose to eat. But he still explained, you know, he said, and and he, what brought this on was he went to the library or whatever and managed to look up a few of the herd Aww. reports. So he was reading the herd reports. And in the herd report, you mentioned the food insecurity thing and going mm -hmm. to Casper and working with the state on food insecurity. So it really kind of struck me that, you know, these people that that are part of our lives, everybody, you know, all of you guys are a part of our lives. We see names pop up that that, you know, we know these people. We, yeah. you know, we we can see them. We see we see Jeanette and we talk to her. Almost every video we put out, we, yeah. we're, we're talking. So we know, you know, we we know you guys. 
in in a way, in, but it's not like a really super personal way. But when you do get those emails from people like that, and you know, he said I had to choose between the internet and, or and and food, and and I good for you, man, because you yeah, made well, the right decision. Yeah. But at the same time, you know, he explained to me that you know, that reading the article that you had written in the Herd Report about food insecurity and how important it is to have food, um, that he really connected to that because he was trying to figure out how to make a loaf of bread last as long as he could. Yeah. Or a bag of beans or whatever like that. And it's really shocking to me that there, that's, that's going on right here. Yeah, I just don't feel like anybody should have to live that way. Like... And, and so there was times, like, in my childhood where, like, we, you know, we, my mom wasn't always married to Gilbert. There wasn't always the ranch. You know, like, there were times when we struggled for food. I remember one summer when it was, it was particularly bad. And you had times, too, in your childhood where things were not great with food and stuff. Like, nobody should ever go without food. Kids should definitely never go without food. And there's, you know, almost every community has a soup kitchen. And, like, we have a council of community services that runs, like, the food pantry. And almost every community has something, you know, a Salvation Army um, that helps people with food and stuff. But it's not good food. I mean, granted, if you're hungry, you're going to eat it and you need it. But um, farmers markets are not something typically that people look to to help solve the food insecurity problem. And our farmers market, this will be our fourth year of doing a program called Share the Harvest, where like myself as a producer or other producers, if I have leftover vegetables at the end of the market that I can't take home and I can't repurpose into anything, or my pigs have had enough zucchini, I can donate it to the Council of Community Services and we share the harvest. And then on Monday, um, when people come and get their weekly allotment of food, they can have fresh local vegetables. And you know, it's just something that we really want and you can do this in almost any community. Your food banks will most likely take donations of vegetables if you have too many in your garden. Like too many zucchini, which everybody has too many <laughs> zucchini. Uh, if your neighbors are tired of it, if your friends or family are tired of it, like check into your local food bank and see if they will take donations of vegetables. And it's just something that I really feel like we need to, uh, that like farmers markets can help with and, you know, there's times where we have, you know, we get bumper crops and we just have too much and I cannot sell it. I cannot make any more pickles, <laughs> you know, and it's, you know, and, and we always try, I just always try and repurpose what I can't sell. Um, and our pigs and our chickens, you know, it helps me cut down on my cost if I can feed them scraps, but there's still always more that can be shared. Right. And I just wanted to, I wanted to toot your horn oh. for that because that's, it's not just me. I mean, it's, we it's like, of course it's not just you. It's a, it's a it's a it's a group of people yeah. that get together and they talk about these kind of things and how farmers markets can help and how producers can help and you know it makes sense. And coming from a, a family that we had trouble getting food occasionally, and yeah, and I very distinctly remember like we had a garden for most of my childhood, but there was a few years where we didn't have a garden and always the summers that we had gardens like we ate better in the summer mm -hmm. so i just wanted to to bring that up just because <laughs> it's incredible to me you know aaron's got 900 things going on all the time and three kids and a garden and she has to look after me and make sure i'm not <laughs> falling off of ladders and whatnot and then you know i come in and it's like hey what are you doing well i'm talking to the state coordinator for Sensible nutrition. Sensible nutrition. And it's like... Mm -hmm. and it, you know it the was, first thing that pops in my head? And this is bad. Why? Why? Yeah. But then, you know, it clicks. And I'm like, okay. I and it was it. really hard to take two days and go to Casper and spend the night. And, you know, I we're not... I'm not going to say who is... I mean, there was three different farmer's market groups and a bunch of people from the University of Wyoming. And, you know, we're essentially forming a coalition, but we don't have a name. We're not really, like, public yet. I'm not going to disclose, like, who was at this group meeting and stuff yet. Um, but there's four of us from, from Campbell County. And, you know, some of the ideas and the discussion that went on in that room, if we can make even a fraction of the things happen that we want to make happen, it will be potentially game-changing for local agriculture in Wyoming. Exactly. All right, guys, we're going to hang it up for tonight. It's 8.04 here, and, you know, I just wanted to get that in, of course. <laughs> But uh, it just gets me some brownie points, man. Um, this will pay off for me later, trust me. Uh, here's a question. Oh, jeez. 
let's just do a couple more questions. Okay. 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 If you all had one word of advice, what would it be? One word of work. Be and I would say two words. Be courageous. Be courageous. Yeah. Do the hard. Make the hard choice. Yeah. And you listen to our podcast. We talk about that as well. But, yeah. um, and that's work too. Even being. I mean, anything you. I don't know. I. I would say it's just work. For me, it's work. Work. Work it, hard. It's. It's not even work hard. I don't care if you can work hard or not. You come out and you work. Yeah. You. You, you may not be able work. to lift the the most. You may not be able to. To you know, throw around the most bales or anything, but you, if you're putting in the work, it will pay off yeah. eventually. Do you have another question that you want to answer? Mm -hmm. I did see one about the baler. Five sixty eight. That's our baler model. I've seen that come by like eight times. Five sixty eight is what the baler we're running with that right. So, okay. anything else? Everyone said goodnight because you said goodnight. I'm sorry. I, Aaron, <laughs> I, I, Aaron, Aaron cut me off. Hey, there it is again. What's your baler? Five sixty eight. Um, of course, thanks thanks to all our moderators. I want to thank Matt for putting up with yeah, me. Yeah, thank you uh, guys. Ron, and apparently we have thousands of moderators tonight because what is everybody's with the blue, a moderator. What is with the blue wretches? Does anybody understand what YouTube is doing? <laughs> Maybe we're the only ones seeing it. Um, you know, thanks to Ron, <laughs> thanks to Bob for coming out. Guy in Wyoming was here. Blake was here for a little bit. Yeah, Go thank check you him guys. out. And thanks to all you guys because without it. Without your support and without you guys being here to, to hang out with us, and you guys are like our core. I figured I always look at it as the people that come to the to the to the live streams and do the stuff that's not. I don't want to call it mainstream because we're we're sure as hell not that. But um, they're they're you guys that are putting in the extra effort. Coming, to, you guys are our core. Yeah. And I and I really do appreciate you guys for being here uh, with us. I don't know how to refresh my thing without closing it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> um, you know, it's just, it's just, it's awesome to have you guys here and have us yeah. support us and seeing new names roll through is always really cool too. Not that I don't love the old folks that hang out with us, you know, not old folks, but like the old subscribers that have been with us for a long time. There you go. Thank you very much. So anyway, uh, thanks for hanging out with us. I, I hope that you got something out of tonight. And if you didn't, you know, it, you Go back and watch if it. If you again. have more questions <laughs> and we didn't answer them, you know, next time there's always a super chat. But send us an email, comment on Facebook, you know, comment, leave another comment on this video after because it will repost. Um, we will answer your comments. Um, so yeah, if you have a question that you're dying to get answered, reach out to us in one form or another, and we will answer it. Yeah, we try to get to them all. So, thanks for hanging out with us tonight. Check us out. Check out our podcast. It's it's something totally different. You may not love it. Um, it's long. Sometimes they run long. <laughs> well, it's like 45 minutes. It's the no last worse. one was like 45 minutes, but it's something to listen to while you're doing, you know, while you're vacuuming or yeah, something. Yeah, I like listen that. to podcasts and audiobooks like when I'm in the garden doing chores. Yeah, exactly. So check out the podcast. See if you like it. it may not be your thing. If it's not, that's fine. But, you know, give us a, give us a, give us a shot anyway. Um, thanks for hanging out with us. We will see you uh, on Sunday morning, 7 a.m. We've got a new video coming yeah. out. Check the description box for the giveaway. Check the description to uh, get signed up for the giveaway. I will get that fixed. And Aaron will be back next week with something. Um, we're going to seed the garden and show you guys how I seed the garden. Some cool tricks with that. So thanks for hanging out with us. Um, again, thanks to our moderators. Thanks to all you guys. And thanks for hanging out with us on our Wyoming Life. Mm -hmm.